In this video, I'll be going over panning and zooming and also having the camera follow the player whenever we are on the line. And so this will be the last video of the mini series. So the first thing we're going to want to do is have the camera follow the player when we press play. And so I'm going to be using an existing script I made in a previous video. And so the link for this video is in the description below. And I've already gone and imported it into my project. So here's the camera follow script. First of all, we want a target to follow, which is our player. Then we want our speed to follow the player at it's kind of like a smooth speed, so how fast the camera follows the player, and an offset, which is how far away the camera is from the player. And then in our late update function, we do a calculation between our current target position, which is the player position, and our offset, which is our desired position, and then we do a smooth damp between our current position, our desired position, and we do it with our smooth speed. And so we'll be attaching this camera follow script into our main camera. So I'm gonna just go ahead and in my main camera, I'm gonna add in the camera follow script, and I'm gonna drag in the player into our target. And so I don't want any Y offset because I want the player to be at the center of the camera. And then Z negative 1.5 seems good for now. And I'm just gonna move my player to the center of the scene. And so now let's activate this camera whenever we are pressing play. So first of all, we want to disable it. So let's disable that since we don't want to have the camera following our player at the beginning when it's not moving. If not, we're not going to be able to use the panning. And then if we go into our player script, we can get a reference to that script and enable it and disable it whenever we start the game and end the game. So I'm just going to delete these two using statements since we're not going to use these two packages up here. And then down here we can get a reference to that script. So we can say private camera follow, and then we can say camera follow. And then in our awake function, we can say camera follow equals camera.main.get component. We can get that camera follow because it's attached to our main camera. All right, and now in our start game method, we can say if we're playing, so if we start pressing play, then we want to enable our camera. So we can say camera follow dot enabled equals true, which will enable the script. And if we're not playing the game, we want to disable it. So we can say camera follow dot enabled equals false. So let's see how that works out. So let's press play and let's do a small line here. And if we press play, you can see that our camera starts to follow our character. But you see that when we stop it, the camera doesn't go back to where our player position is at, which is unfortunate. And that's because we're trying to change the position and also disable the camera and it's clashing and this is disabled before it can follow the player back to the starting position. All right, and so to fix that, we can actually make a little helper function in our camera follow script. And you can also set up a curtain to wait for a bit while the camera continues to follow the player. But instead of that, we're gonna do that in the camera follow. So we can just say public void center on target. So in this function, we're going to center in on our target and ignore the late update. So we're just going to set the transform.position directly and we're going to set it to our target position, target.position plus our offset. And so then here, before we disable the camera follow, we can say camera follow dot center on target. And then when we press play, it will center in on the target before disabling itself. All right, so let's press play. And when we stop, it will center in our target. Awesome. All right, so now let's implement panning. So recently we made a mouse controls input action and we have a click, a position, an erase, and a zoom. So for our panning, all we're gonna wanna keep track of is our position of our mouse. So make sure you have that in your input action. And our control type is vector two because our mouse position has an X and Y in the Unity scene. And right here you can just see I populated the binding with the position of the mouse. All right, so let's make the new script. So right click, create, C sharp script, and let's call it pan. All right, so I'm just gonna erase these functions right here because we're not gonna need them and we don't need these two using statements either. And so the first thing we wanna do is we want to make a serialized field for our panning speed. So we can say private float pan speed equals, and you can set a default value. I found two to be a good value, but you can change it around. We also want a reference to our camera. So we can say private transform and we want the transform because we're gonna be changing the transform main camera, and that's actually all we need. All right, so let's set up these variables so we can do a private void awake, 
And in our awake function, let's set our main camera transform. So main camera equals camera dot main dot transform. And that's all we need for our awake function, which is really neat. And so we only want to call the panning and the zooming while we're not playing the game. So while the sled person is static. So we're going to want to reference this script from somewhere else. Instead of doing an update function in this script, we're just going to make a normal public function and then refer to that function in another script. So we can say public void pan screen. We can also pass in our vector to mouse screen position which we're going to need to pan. And so first of all, we need the direction to pan in. And so then after we have the direction, we can move to that direction. So we can actually make a helper function for that. So let's do a vector two direction equals, and our function is gonna be called pan direction. So we can say pan direction and we can pass in our mouse screen position. And so let's make that function. So we can say private vector two pan direction and we're returning a vector2 because it's a direction vector and we want to pass in our vector2 mouse screen position. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we can tell if we're in the border of our screen because we have a variable we can use called screen.height and that returns the height of our screen and we also have screen.width and so we can compare our mouse screen position to the height and width of the screen in order to determine if we're on an edge. And let's do that in this function. So first of all, we want to return our direction that we're gonna be traveling in. So we're, let's make a variable for that and let's call it direction. And I'm gonna equal it to vector 2.0 because we don't wanna move if we're not at the edge of the screen. And so now we have a series of if statements to determine what edge we're on. And depending on which edge we're on, we're gonna shift the direction towards that edge. So. The first if statement is going to check if our mouse is at the top of the screen. So we can say if mouse screen dot position dot y and we can say is greater than or equal to the screen height. And now you might be wondering if it's greater than the screen height, then it's going to be out of the screen. So we can actually times that by a value that's less than one. So we can times that by maybe 0.95 and that means it's at the top 5% of the screen. So if it's in the top 5% of the screen, then we can add in a direction.y plus equals one. So now it'll move one unit upwards if it's at the top 5% of the screen. And so I'm just gonna copy this if statement three more times, and we're just gonna do several variations of this. And so the next one is the bottom of the screen. So let's put less than or equal to, and instead of 0.95, we can say 0.05. So if the mouse screen position is less than the bottom 5%, then we're at the bottom. And then we can just say negative equals one. So now we're moving in the downwards direction. Same with here, instead of mouse position dot Y, we can do dot X and we can change it from height to width. And then inside the if statement, we can just say direction dot X. And for the last if statement, we can do mouse screen position dot X. And now we can do less than or equal to, and we can change that to screen dot width. And again, from 0.95 to 0.05. And then in our if statement, we can just say direction X minus equals one. And then down here, we can just return our direction. So basically here we're saying if we're at the top 5% of the screen, then move up. If we're at the top bottom 5% of the screen, then we're gonna move down. And you can tell that if we're at the top of the screen, we're never gonna be at the bottom of the screen because it just doesn't work that way. So we can do an if else statement here and the same for the X. And we wanna make sure to separate the Y and the X because we can also move diagonally if our mouse is at the corner of the screen. So that returns our panning direction and then in our pan screen function, we can now change the position of our camera. So we can say main camera dot position equals, and instead of just changing the panning screen very abruptly, we can lerp to that value. So we can say vector three dot lerp, which is linear interpolation. And then we have to put in our current position, which is the camera dot position. And then we have to put in the position that we want to move to. And so we can do direction plus our current position main camera dot position and that will go in the direction that we want to move in and we also have to make sure to cast our direction into a vector 3 since it's currently a vector 2 and then we can just do the time that it takes to lerp to that value so we can just say time dot delta time and then we can also times it by our panning speed so you can do it either in here so direction times panning speed 
Or we can do it in the time dot delta time. Times pan speed. All right, so that's the basics of our panning. And so let's actually call this function from somewhere. So we don't want to call this in our input manager because our input manager just manages input and we don't want to make it do anything else. And we only want to do this when we're playing the game. So you can make a separate script to manage the state of the game, such as if it's playing or not. And then if it's playing or not, you can call the panning and zooming. Um, but for now, I'm just going to be putting it in the line manager just to simplify this video a bit. So we can say serialize field private, and then we can just say player and then player. And so this will get a reference to our player script where then we will be able to tell if it's playing or not. And so back into our player script, you see that we have a private Boolean. So we can set that to public so we can actually get the reference to it. And if you wanted to go the extra step and make it public to get, but private to set, you can easily do that with C sharp by doing a curly brace and then get. And then you can do a private set. So this is just an accessor to this function so you can access its value. And so you can get it publicly since it's public but you can only set it within the script. And so then in our awake function, we want to make sure to set our playing equal to false. And so back into our line manager, once we have our player, we can do a update in here. So we can do update. So we can do here if player dot playing, then we can call our panning, which we actually need a reference to. So right here, we're actually going to attach our panning and zooming into the same line manager object just to simplify things a bit. So we can say private pan panning. And then in our wake, we can say panning equals get component pan. And so now that we have our reference, then in our update method, we can call panning dot and then pan screen. And then we have to pass in our mouse screen position. So we already have a function for that and that's called get current screen point. And so I've made a silly mistake that I didn't even notice previously in the panning. And it's right here. I said else. And then I actually had this if statement. And with the else, you're not supposed to have any if statements. So it will be fixed if we just put else if. Very silly mistake. And another silly mistake that I noticed is that I'm saying if the player is playing, then we pan the screen. But it's actually the other way around. If the player isn't playing, then that's where we want to edit the level. All right, and now we have to go into our manager and set our player instance. So let's drag in our player and let's also add in our pan script. And before we press play, I just found that eight seemed to be a better value for me in the panning script, but you can just change it to your liking. So now I can pan around and we can draw this big slope. And when we press play, then our line writer will go down the slope and crash. All right, so now let's implement the zooming functionality. So let's right click create C sharp script and call that zoom. All right. And so now in our zooming script, we can actually erase this update function since we don't need that. And we can also delete these two using statements since we don't need that as well. And we want to specify three variables here. So the first one is our zoom speed. So we can say private float zoom speed. And I can just set that to anything you want. So maybe 2F. And then we also want to do a zoom in max. So our maximum distance that we want to zoom in. So we can say private float zoom in max. And I can just set that to maybe one or two. And then we want the other side of it, which is how far you want to zoom out. So the maximum distance to zoom out. And you can just say private float zoom out max equals maybe 15. And then we want a reference to our main camera. So let's do private camera, main camera. And in our awake function, we can say main camera equals camera dot main. And we want the camera, not the transform, because we're going to be changing the size of the camera, not the transform of the camera. And so for our zooming, we have to take into account our starting position in order to tell if we're zoomed in to the max or zoomed out to the max. So we can also have another variable called private float. And we can just say starting Z position because we only need to really keep track of the Z axis, which is how far we're zooming in and out. And then you can just say starting Z position equals, we can just say main camera dot transform dot position dot Z. And let's actually erase the start method since we don't need that. And then we can have a function public void zoom screen. 
and in our zoom screen we're actually be gonna passing in our increment so this is going to be passed in from our line manager and this is just how far we've zoomed in and out and this we're getting from our input so remember the input action we have our zoom and it's an access control type so it returns a float and it's just returning the scroll y how far we've scrolled so we're going to be passing in that increment and we're just going to say if our increment equals zero, then we don't really want to do anything else. We want to change the orthographic size of our camera and that'll make it look as if it's zoomed in or out. So we can just say float target. So this is our target of how much we want to zoom in or out. And we want to get our main size. So main camera dot orthographic size. This is literally just the size of our camera. And then we just want to add in our increment. And this is great and all, but how do we know if we're between these two values? Well, we can actually clamp between those two values. So we can say mathf.clamp and clamping will make sure we don't extend past the minimum and the maximum value. So we pass in the value first, then our minimum, which is zoom in max, and our maximum, which is zoom out max, which the names might be a little confusing and you can change that if you want but we're zooming in and then we're zooming out. And then we can actually set the orthographic size. So we can say main camera dot orthographic size and we can do the same thing as the panning. So we can say math f dot lerp and we can do it from the current orthographic size to our target one. And then we can do our time dot delta time times our zoom speed. All right, and then into our line manager, now we can also call in our zoom. So up here we need a reference to our zoom script. So we can say private zoom, zoom. And then in our awake, we can say zoom equals get component, zoom. And then right here we can say zoom dot zoom screen. And then we have to pass in our increment. So let's make a helper function for that. So private float get zoom value and then we can just return input manager dot and then we need our zoom value so let's go to our input manager and see if we did that all right so we have a function for that awesome so we can just say get zoom and then in our zoom screen we can just say get zoom value all right so now if we go into our manager and we add a new component zoom and we press play then we can actually zoom in and out now. And it's a little slow, so you can actually adjust the speed however you like. So now you see it's a little faster now. So currently if I scroll down, it zooms in. And so you can easily negate that. So in our zoom screen function, we can just say increment times equals negative one to negate that. So now we zoom in by scrolling up, but we don't wanna do that because there's a much nicer way to do that. We want to use our input action that we already made. They have a processor for that. So in our zoom function, we can go to our processors and we can add an invert processor and that will invert the value for us, which is very nice. We don't have to do any extra calculation there. All right, now we zoom in and out in the correct direction. Awesome. So I want to thank you so much for all of your support in this video. There's a couple of other things that you can add, which is the surface vector 2D to make sure that you can go in both directions. You can also make the line colliders bigger in order to prevent the line writer from going through the lines. If it's going too fast, it'll just go through the lines. And that's why the surface vector is a little bit fast. So if you decrease the speed, it has less chance of going through the lines. You can also have different surface effectors per line. So right here you see I've changed the surface effector speed to four. So now it won't really fall through the lines as much. Another thing that you can do is when you press play and it starts the game, if you don't have your mouse right at the center, it will start to pan very immediately. So you can always wait one or two seconds before you allow them to pan. So it just doesn't start panning right away and they can get their mouse centered on the screen. There's just a lot of stuff you can do with this. The possibilities are endless. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. I wanna thank you all for 1000 subscribers. Um, this series was a thank you for that. And I really wanna thank my patrons for all their support. And I wanna thank a new patron, Tofi. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. It goes a long way to helping me make these videos. If you're interested, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access, as well as an exclusive Discord chat. And I also offer the source code for this project on my Patreon. And the link for my Discord chat is also in the description where you can ask questions or just chat away. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.